Well, good morning to you and welcome. Gosh, we had a great series kickoff last week. We started last Monday with supercharging your job search. We moved into Tuesday all about how to really retell your career story across your resume in a very succinct way that really makes them jump out of the chair. Then how do you take that succinct telling of your career story over to LinkedIn and transform it into a three-dimensional sales brochure? That was Wednesday's lecture. Followed by Thursday of last week, we did part two to LinkedIn, which is called Career Evolution, Preparing for Your Career's Next Leap with Social Media Marketing. Ending last week with interview intervention. And today, it's the paradigm shift in job search, marketing yourself to the decision maker. And we'll take you through all those scary steps of reaching out really to just the right person. Now, no matter where you are in the process, check out my full schedule. They're all available over on LinkedIn Live, over my Facebook channel, over my YouTube channel, which of course is called Self Recruiter. And tomorrow, one final lecture before Wednesday's Q&A, but tomorrow we'll be charting your career transition. So if you are really done, done, done doing what you're doing now and don't know what to do next, great lecture for you. Wednesday at same time, 11 a.m., will be this Ask Self Recruiter live Q&A. So if you're not getting your job search questions answered, send them in, send them in to ask at selfrecruiter.com. And of course, all the very best ones are always included. And I take as many on the fly as possible as well. Well, let's get in today. Today is all about how we market ourselves right to the decision maker. So if that's unclear to you, let me clarify in a different way. I am not a fan of applying for jobs online. Typically, what those do is go to the wrong person. Those tend to go to the folks in HR most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. And if you'd like to work in HR, that's fantastic. Those are your decision makers. If you'd like to work in another department, that HR department is there to filter you out, looking for the very, very best person, but they don't actually have the right background to look for the best person. Therefore, if you simply found the courage to get yourself in front of the decision maker, even a 30, 60, 90 second conversation with the decision maker, they know exactly why you're right for this role or not, or not, can't talk yourself into a role you're not right for. So let's jump into the self recruiter umbrella. This covers the entire lecture series. And of course, it's about becoming this one great recruiter that oversees and manages one great candidate and that's you. So it does involve networking in a very different way. So if you haven't seen the LinkedIn lecture, do go back and watch that one. It also means we have to keep one eye on the toughest competitor imaginable, <laughs> those four or five, six people that would simply scare you out of applying for that job. Or those people we can beat very, very easily. If you're the resources, of course, my book's a good resource available on my website over on Amazon. Uh, it's a really great roadmap for wherever you get yourself and how to navigate either through or around or all those other things. Really, it's all about understanding the rules of job search and when we should violate those rules, maybe get out of the rut that we're stuck in and maybe do things a different way. If sitting, hitting submit, 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 submit is leaving you failing these things, you're not getting the interviews you deserve, there's something really wrong in the process. Why don't you not let people that aren't really qualified to rule you out, rule you out, and let's get right to the decision maker who can really understand your value. That's a paradigm shift. That's, am I allowed to do that? Well, you are, if you need my permission, I give you my permission. Subtitle of my book is changing the rules. This is not about changing every rule, but this is about changing any rule that blocks you or stops you or prevents you from being able to deliver value to these companies. And that means I have to have a lot of unconventional thinking, creative interpretation, and those light bulb moments of clarity. So, well, gosh, here, here's, let's skip by this one, which shouldn't be in my deck here. Sorry about that. Um, let's go right over here. Oh, there we go. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller so I can still see you guys, which is always so important. So who is it that makes the decisions? We get hung up over this. Well, the, the ad says must apply online, must send it to here, must send it to this person who's trying to fill 10 open jobs, doesn't have a background in any one of those open jobs and is deciding your destiny, ruling you in or out. Well, that's a little too much risk for me. I mean, you don't plan your financial future by stopping at the bodega to buy a lottery ticket, do you? I mean, I still stop for a little fun on occasion, but I don't plan my financial future that way. You shouldn't plan your career future this way. So when we think of who it is that makes the decisions, we have to think of all the people that are collectively involved, 
because it's not just the decider. Ooh, what a terrible word that is. <laughs> yes, there may be someone labeled the decider, but rarely do they really make those decisions in some vacuum or isolated. It. It's, it's a collective decision, even though they may be anointing the decision. Now, who, who are our competitors? Who are the people that, that, you know, block all of, of the visual because they just clog the system? Mediocre. This is about half of the, of the workforce, by the way, of only average quality, not very good. I mean, I can re you can read all of these things. No great shakes, not up to much Bush League. You know, if, if, if this is the state of about half of the workforce, then what do you have to be? A little bit better than mediocre. So, sorry, I realized my screen is not sharing. <laughs> we are going to share that one for you. Sorry about that. Uh, seems like when I had a technical glitch, that screen share lost. And there it is. Mediocre. Of all a moderate quality. Not very good. Unremarkable. All those things that are there that you can now read because you can see it. So all you have to do is be a little bit better. And all you have to do beyond that is put a little bit of heart and soul into whatever it is you do. You'll naturally be that top one, two, three percent. That's part of the secret. Make sure you carry that across the personal branding, just like we talked all last week about across the resume, across the LinkedIn profile, even into a social media campaign, as we talked last Thursday, and of course, right into your interview. That's all part of your personal branding, how you make yourself stand out. The trap, as you heard over and over last week, is that people see this, this and they go, you know what? I've got it. I've got it. I'll be cookie cutter perfect, cookie cutter perfect. I'll just fit right in. That's fine. That's fine. I'll take number two. Number two. I'll take you. No, I'm paying you less. I'm paying you less. No, you don't want it. Okay. Number three, number five doesn't really matter because if you're just interchangeable, I'm those, that's a commodity. I'm going to pay you less. You have to somehow achieve yes, being interchangeable, but also being somehow different, special, get out of line. That's how you raise your value. And then make sure you carry that across all of the different things we talked about last week. Go back and see those lectures if you need to. Now, in preparing to reach out to the decision maker, there's lots of things we might like to say. Oh, I love to talk about this part of my background. No, no, I love to talk about this. Don't we all? But you need to focus it for your audience. You may have 30, 60, 90 seconds before they make some decision about you to continue listening and talking or to cut you off. Say, hey, did you apply online? Click. So everything has to be filtered through a singular question, which probably heard a lot last week if you tuned in, and that is, why is it going to be the very best business decision if they choose to hire you? Now, we take whatever we think is the one, two, three answers about that, and that doesn't become the entirety of the story, but that becomes the, 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 the leading edge of the story. Now we have to figure out, well, who is it that makes the decisions? Well, if you're an HR, it's an HR person, <laughs> probably not the one you're sending your resume to which is probably a competitor of yours. It's like, oh, let's see who's coming in today. Oh, oh, that's a nice background. Oh, they're probably going to take my next promotion. Oh, we'll, we'll put that over here in this stack over here. Uh, 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 oh, this one, nothing to see here. Perfect, perfect. Not going to steal my wind. Let's not send to our competitors. If you're going to HR, please send to the boss or boss's boss's boss or the boss's boss's boss. Hiring manager, everybody else. So depending on what field we are, let's walk you right through how to find decision makers. Now, I talked about this in a couple of lectures last week, so it's, it's there as well. But this is really how to find anybody. But today we'll think about those decision makers. So whatever your field is, customer service or sales or accounting or anything else up here, I think we more or less get how the titles work in our field. It's very easy to do a reverse search of LinkedIn and peel back and go, well, what would the org chart look like around me? And, and, who are those people and what do I imagine their problems are and how could I be this person that saves their day, essentially? Let's talk about LinkedIn because this is going to be part of how we reach out to those decision makers. De facto social networking website of our work life. Very much like Facebook, but this one's for career. So uh, it's a few other things, though. And, and we need to think about this three-level network. So just to, so you understand the basics, if I connect to you and I'm this happy guy in the corner connected to the other two happy people, um, they're my connections, of course, but all those people behind them are also in John's pool. This entire thing is my pool just because of those two people, because no matter what those two people do, every one of their connections, no matter what they do in settings, every one of their connections are in my pool. They're not my connections, two different things, but they're in my pool. And no matter what those secondary people do to their settings, 
every one of their connections are also in John's pool. I get a three level network, which is incredibly powerful. These are my numbers actually from quite recently, almost 12,000 direct connections. Yep. Public speaker. It's not very difficult for me, but three levels out that gives me a pool of people better than 21 million people that I can influence. And that means whenever I want to reach out to a certain company, I can see every decision maker I really need to see. Now, how do we find those folks? We go up to a unified search box at the top of any page. In this case, I'm searching Informatica, big database middleware company. The, the, the trap here is you see this drop down menu. Oh my gosh, don't click on the drop down menu, trip down the rabbit hole. Simply type what you'd like, hit enter, and then you get this nice secondary sorting process. Now, as long as I'm here, yes, I'm looking for people at Informatica so I can go market myself. But don't I think there's probably other companies that I somehow are off my radar that would also love to hire me? So even though I'm here, I really want to look at companies first. Where'd they hide it? Oh, just down the drop down menu. They hit it there. What do we get? 34,000 companies. I should tell you, I'm only working on the free version of LinkedIn. You can do everything you're seeing here on the free version. Uh, well, after you get by all these Informatica, Informatica, what's going on with these 34,000? All system integrators it used to be one of my fields. So everybody down this list that it's not Informatica either resells or installs Informatica software. If I'm statistically right to work for Informatica, oh, I'm very statistically likely to be right for a great number of the other folks on this list. This is another method that I teach for building statistically perfect lists. Changes everything in job search if you approach the right companies that would be dying to hire you versus random companies that have a role that could be right for you, but it's not really the right match for them. But then I have to get to people. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to say, oh, no, no, no. show me the people. 2.5 million. Cold and in the ground before I ever get through that list. Let me put my thinking cap on here. Oh, 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 I know what it is. I don't need everybody. I need people currently working for Informatica and currently working in the U.S. So even on the free version, let's go. Yeah, show me the ones in the U.S. And, and, and let's not forget, show me the ones currently, not three years ago, Informatica. And what, what do I get? 1,615 results. My gosh, I'm doing much better now. Uh, but I can't look at 1,615 profiles. They'll cut me off very quickly. Um, <laughs> hmm, hmm. Thinking cap, because this is problem solving. Reaching out to the decision maker is thinking like a detective, a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes. So maybe it's a VP. I think a VP is going to hire me. Really, US? Really? Informatica? 75 VPs. Oof. A lot of chiefs, a lot of chiefs. Let's, listen, maybe it's a director. It's a director, I think. Director. Really US, really Informatica, what do I get? 228 directors. I'm going the wrong direction. Oh, I have it, I have it, I have it. You know why? Because it's problem solving. That's what we have to do. We have to go through and problem solve and use our brain power. You know what it is? It's a sales director. I think it's a sales director. As long as I'm thinking clearly, let's go right down to New York City, even on the free version, currently working for Informatica. And I get three magical. What I'm really looking for here is three to five people. And part of this entire process, which you would have heard from last week's lectures, is as I'm restructuring, looking for these three to five, I'm also trying to collect 25 to 30 people that somehow surround that job. Up, up, up the food chain, down, 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 all the way down to admin level for very strategic reasoning, left and right into a couple of the departments. And in that process, I'm going to get to three to five people. Now, you might go, well, John, I got to three. Fantastic. Yeah, if the minimum is adequate for you. <laughs> I think you get it's not adequate for me. The minimum, if I do the minimum over 10 different companies I'm approaching, I'm going to get the minimum number of results. If I do five people across 10 organizations that I'm pursuing, I'm going to get much different results than the person that only did three. So more thinking cap. Let's see. Maybe it's a sales VP, Greater New York City, really working for Informatica. <gasps> Two more. Now I'm up to five. That quickly, that easily. Of course, I want to connect with all of these folks, as you heard in my LinkedIn lecture. Uh, when it says connect, I love it. When it says in mail, I go, oh, please understand what in mail is before you send it. It is spam. Quite directly, the literal definition of spam. It's paid email. Please don't send it, uh, in my view. Everything I'm telling you is just my advice. But but to me, I can tell you if they're a high value target, and I'm certainly one of those folks, my inbox on LinkedIn is filled with well, 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 over a thousand nonsense spammy messages trying to sell, sell, sell me. <laughs> 
and, and it clogs up all the other things. So I still want to connect with Nick, but I'm frustrated. And if I load his profile, I still get frustrated. But if I simply go dot, 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 look at they hit the connect button just behind the bushes. I'll, I'll put it over here. They'll never find it. <gasps> there it is. And I'm going to connect with these people. Now, the message I connect with them, because that's just the first step of the sales process, is real simple. I'd love to connect with you. I'd like to connect with other individuals in our field, other professionals. And of course, I'd love to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. It says, you don't know me. I'm professionally appropriate. Here's a little stroke to the ego. Fantastic. That's a cop. One time ever, I write that copy and paste forevermore run down that list pretty fast. That's the first step. Run, 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 run. It's all done. Fantastic. And then what comes next? Well, that's just the first salvo. Opening all 25 to 30 profiles, even though I'm going to select the three, four, five, triggers a marketing event of you having looked at them. We need silence over there. And, and beyond that, I then have to sit and go, well, not only is this a sales process, this is a dating process. So it has to be about them before it's ever about you, even though we're there to sell ourselves. What is it about them that makes it irresistible? Yes, close to a dating process. That's how you create engagement. So uh, how often can I do this? How do I, should I do it by email? Should I do it by phone number? Yes, all of the above if possible. I know it takes extra courage to pick up the phone. And most people are like, oh, well, I couldn't do that. It depends what your motivation is. Now, I years ago when I got into recruiting, I'll tell you a little bit more about my background as I move along. But gosh, I quit a very good job. I had 43 employees running a, a $4 million round the clock nightmare <laughs> of just how do we solve these problems to get the profit up to the right level so I earn the right amount. And then suddenly I changed professions completely and went into recruiting and had to pick up the phone to call people I didn't know. And I was never in sales. I'm like, oh, frightening. But I was very motivated because I saw someone 10 years younger than me making a lot more money than I was. And I had 43 employees. I'm like, this is not right. <laughs> Let's fix this. So the frequency is about really being a service to them rather than that thorn in the little lion's paw or bear's paw or, oh, I got a thorn. I got a thorn bothering me over and over and over. Don't be the thorn. Why don't you be the person that throws them the life preserver? That boss is probably drowning in all sorts of problems. And if you're not needy in the approach, if you understand it's a date in the approach and it's all about them and then show up with your value that you know they could use, that's a very different thing. Now, uncovering the emails, uncovering the phone numbers, not very difficult. Part of our, our overall tools that we have to think about. All you have to do to get anybody's email address is get one person's email address in the company. Apply the name to the format, and you've got 99% of the people there that don't fall out for some other weird reason. Uh, the 1% you can't get, you got to let that go. Got to let it go, move on to an easier target. That's the phone number. For the phone number, I'm sorry, the email, look at the company website. Quickly look around for any human being. By the way, jobs at is not a person's email. <laughs> find someone's email. If you don't find it there, quickly go to Google. Take Informatica as an example. I could simply go... Well, what's their email address? Well, I bet you it's going to be at informatica.com and then some sort of people person part in front of it. If you simply took at informatica.com, put that whole thing in quotes, it's going to search exactly for that. And guess what comes up right next to it? The people part. And don't click on the results, but look one, two, three pages in and suddenly you'll spot an email address 99% of the time. Apply the name to the format. In terms of phone, Google is your friend too. Figure out where the office is. You can actually put Oracle, King of Prussia, whatever it is, and the local office oftentimes comes up whatever the company might be. Um, you need to go and take a quick look there. Let's talk a little bit about the calling script because we have to have the calling script before we're really ready for the outreach. The calling script is, is much simpler than you think it is. This is not a great one. It's very simple. Hi, this is John. I'd like you to hire me. Uh, how'd you get my number? Take me off your list. Never call me again. Security. That's not going to help you. So it has, that's all about me. You have 30 seconds to live or die. And the dying sounds like, how'd you get my number? Take me off your list. Never call me again. I, I hate you folks. So I'm going to have to really come up with the right thing here. Why don't we zoom in so we can see this a little bit. Now, 
you're not really going to write this right now. You're going to write this as part of the homework. But what you will discover from this is how the flow works and how the sound works. And all that text on the left will help remind you of everything I'm teaching you when you write your own. So let's just go through the script itself uh, and tell you why it's valuable. First thing is the tone. And you need to reach out to a dear old friend you probably haven't spoken to in five years. So you already know it's warm and welcome and there's no rush, even though you may get that when they answer the phone. But that's the attitude. I'm going to greet them. Now, I used to teach recruiters this all the time. I did promise to tell you about my background. Seven or eight years in outside recruitment. That's a typical headhunter on a desk having to go into the competitor company, find the superstar, lure them out. It's like being a glorified dating guru, really. Millionaire matchmaker. <laughs> Might have been another route. Um, so when I'm teaching recruiters this, I'm going to have to greet them, wait for the response, acknowledge their response. You can't pretend good, bad, or ugly that, that it didn't happen. Tell them why you're calling. And, and of course, maybe your educational background. If you went to one of these schools, there's only about this many. I, I know you think you went to these schools, but, oh, these are just as good. I'm like, no, no. There's about these many schools that are really going to make them jump out of the chair. The rest, save that back. Get right to two or three key things that would make them jump out of the chair and then close them, which is a scary sales term, go right for the jugular, simply means book the interview, persuade them to your value, get them to agree to meet with you. Now, let's let's let you hear how this might sound. It has to be organic, of course, and true to your story, but this will give you a very, very good idea. Hey, good morning, Jack. It's John Krant. How are you doing this morning? Pause. <laughs> Notice a couple things. Always by first name. I don't care if it's Jack Welsh at GE. I don't care if they've got the doctor title. None of it matters. It's by first name as an equal. You must be equal to every single person that you speak with. I will never speak up to someone and certainly never speak down to someone. Equal, 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 relaxed. Notice I said my full name. And it should have sounded quite clear because I did the extra step of putting a very difficult pregnant pause between my first and last name. Otherwise, everybody thinks my last name is Grant. Well, thank you, but my last name is not Grant. It's Krant. <laughs> you don't know how many TV shows and radio shows I've been on that when it's like, oh, John Grant. I'm like, did a lot of pre-reading before this interview, right? <laughs> so in terms of the telephone, you don't want that to happen. And, and the best way because most of us swallow our name. Oh, hey, good morning. I'm John Crank. What? what, what? Hey, it's John Crank. What, what, what? Can't quite hear that. Hey, good morning. It's John Crant. You know how hard that is in the mouth? It is hard. You have to practice it. Wait for the response. Good, bad, or ugly. Nobody wants to wait, by the way, because this is where they go. How'd you get my number? Take me off your list. Never call me again. Okay. Uh, but it's not a conversation if we don't let them speak. So wait for the response. And, and they're going to give you one of three responses. The first response I really like is, I'm fine, John. How can I, how can I help you? Fantastic. I love it. Or, or they're going to give you the trained dog response. I, I, I'm fine, John. How, how can I help you? I'll take it. I'll take it. You set me up. I'm going to keep moving. It doesn't matter your form. Or they're going to give you something you don't like. I'm terrible. The easy ones I think you can get from hearing the terrible. Let's go back and do the terrible all the way through. So you get how to overcome those things. Also notice when they hit me with the terrible, I do change directions, but I certainly don't speed up. I'm very confident talking to a dear old friend, just like you should be, realizing that they're going to love to hear what this is. So let's hear it from the top. Hey, good morning, Jack. It's John Krant. How are you doing this morning? I'm terrible. Well, Jack, let's see if we can change that. You know, I just had to reach out and introduce myself to you. I'm so excited by what I see going on at XYZ Company. You know, I, I saw that Wall Street Journal article on your new such and such launch. Oh, those things are always so good to get. Why don't you try speaking to them like an actual human being rather than a machine? <laughs> um, and then dot, dot, dot. At that moment, all you have to decide is what carrot do I use to get an interview, a meeting? By the way, they don't have to call it a, an interview, a meeting. Every meeting is an interview. So what carrot, what could I offer them that would be worth a meeting? And I go... You know, Jack, back when I was with XYZ Company, oh, we handled a very similar launch. Oh, I'd love to come in and share with you how we tackled all those issues I bet your team's experiencing. And then you have to be brave enough to close, go for the jugular. That was the two or three key accomplishments piece right 
in just the reference to their similar project. Oh, I could share this information with you. And then I go, I have an opening, like it's an epiphany. Huh? I looked at my calendar. I have an opening on my calendar. My calendar. Your words are very important. Tuesday at 10 a.m. One day, one time, never more. If you are open all next week, I am not meeting with you. You are not valuable. Your schedule is not busy. You're going to waste my time. One day, one time. I don't expect them to be open. If they are, you better be open because you offered it. But I expect them to go. <laughs> Tuesday's terrible. Wednesday, three o'clock. That smoothly, I offer them an alternate if they have a negative reaction to that. My job is to book the meeting and quit speaking. Then go back and prepare for that meeting on Wednesday, three o'clock, whatever it might be. So I want you to think about this and practice it. You have to practice it out loud and you have to practice it with a friend or a coach or someone that can really help you become very, very smooth. Because not only do you have to say what's there, but you have to be light on your feet like a boxer ready to move in conversation. Now, back to the email, voicemail, LinkedIn, snail mail, all of these things can have an effect. I have people that go, you know, what if I mailed my resume? Oh, I like it because nobody mails their resume anymore. Well, a few, a few. But you know, my least favorite thing is when people mail you a resume and I open the envelope, here's a resume. There's no message. What am I supposed to do with this thing? It's like, oh, random resumes. Well, you know, I can get those off the internet. <laughs> so let's make sure your outreach makes sense. Uh, uh, Old-fashioned mail can work, but then you have to have the personal letter. Dear Jack, I, I had to take the moment to actually pop this in the mail. I wanted to make sure you didn't miss it. What I see going on at your organization is so exciting. You know, saw the new such and such launch in the Wall Street Journal, and I have such specific expertise and background on a very similar launch I thought it might be valuable to you if I dropped by and shared how we overcame all those issues of what your team's experiencing. Yeah, I can be a little more flowery in a letter I might drop in the mail. Uh, but really, if I'm going to do this the right way, I would like to, no matter how scary, I'd like to come up with a one-two combination. That means email and phone, email and phone, where I can market to them in through their eyes and in through their ears almost simultaneously. Now, the way this works is I write that script. Not too difficult there. I put the email up on screen. I could send it. I could send it, but I don't. It's on screen. Could send it. Didn't send it. If I'm going to call, I now pick up the phone. And you realize it's almost word for word the same in voicemail versus email. You know, one or two small changes. The key is don't go into voicemail mode. People go beep up and say, oh, hi, Jack. It's, it's John Cranston. What are we doing up there in the clouds? Why, why did that happen? So instead, go the opposite direction, drop your register, relax your vocal tone. And when that beep goes on, I go, hi, good, good morning, Jack. <laughs> it's John Krant, just like they should know who that is. They have no idea who that is. <laughs> and, and your message compared to the ones next to it, oh, everything else will pale in comparison to yours. Many, many return calls from this. So really, I'm going to send that message, that voicemail, if it all goes well, I now click send on the email. If you make enough calls, you're going to stick your foot in your mouth. If you don't stick your foot in your mouth, you didn't make enough calls. So would you really like this next opportunity? Let's make some more calls. But more calls means eventually you will make a mistake. So we have to think about that and think about how we, we fix that. So if I suddenly uh, got off track, 10 things going through my brain and suddenly went the wrong direction in the voicemail, <sighs> Some of those systems do not let you re-record. So let's be super careful with that. Um, you know, it's a trap to think, oh, I could just re-record this because some of them won't let you. If you leave a bad voicemail, you need to call them right back. Oh, when I was first in training as a recruiter, I'm making my first handful of calls and, and suddenly something went very, very wrong and, and, and they hung up on me. I mean, I probably sounded like I was wasting their time. I'm too new. And they hung up on me and... and my trainer was really just two or three feet behind me, just over my shoulder and go, they hang up on you? Hang up on you? Read out. Read out. Like right now? <laughs> hit read out. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> and I hit read out, but my gosh, what an amazing lesson that was. I've never had someone hang up on me twice. Now, yes, you do have to give them a way to save face. You can't call them back to humiliate them. That's not going to go really well for you. 
And so I have to like pretend that we just got disconnected. So I call him and go, oh, oh hi, I'm sorry, it's John Crown. I, I, I got disconnected. I, I was trying to reach Jack Smith. And most of the time, the person will just drop the facade and apologize right there and ask how they can help. I, I'm sorry, I was having a bad day. How, how can I help you? Thank you. <laughs> and put me right through. Um, if you get a particularly difficult gatekeeper, well, they have to use the bathroom. They have to go to lunch. They have to go come into work and go home at a certain time, learn to call off hours if we need to. So I want you to think about that. And, and if you need to correct something, left a bad voicemail, you could also correct the email and in front of which you already wrote, say, dear Jack, sorry about that email. Thought I could re-record, comma. I didn't want to lose you to lose sight of the fact that I just had to reach out and introduce myself to you. You have to think about some non-traditional communications as well. I've, I've certainly had people get their interview because they said happy birthday to the right VP over on Facebook. Now that'll tell you they were already connected to the VP they'd like to work for at another company long before it was necessary. Most people can't effectively use Facebook because they have too much other traffic and minutia there. So you want to think about that and, and figure out how we get around that. Sorry, we have a little bit of, of outside noise today. We have the window open and there's some fresh air. Sorry about that. Now, what's your story? Because it's all about the message you're going to present. What have you gone through? So you're going to have to think about what's effective or not effective in how you tell your story. Now, if you need more work on this piece, go back and watch the resume lecture, go back and watch the, watch the LinkedIn lecture and even the career evolution lecture. All of those surround message in different ways, but you have to convey authority and, and passion and ability. And above everything else, you better convey that you're potentially the future for their company or they're not really going to be excited to hire you. Now, we're going to use social media marketing as part of the outreach. The first trigger was to open their profiles. Second trigger on social media was to ask them to connect. That's really like two hooks with two worms thrown out into the pond. And we let them wiggle around until suddenly somebody clicks on us. But getting ready to present yourself, you have to have an idea. Well, what do they really need? What would they react to? What do I want to say? And understanding that we change reality by changing perception. And then violate whatever rules that are set up that restrict you. If the rules don't work for you, maybe we need to go over that fence and do something a different way. If eventually an HR person calls you back because you went right to the president or CEO or the VP or whatever, and suddenly an HR person is calling you back to scold you, of course, when they call me back, I'm going to fall right on that sword and apologize. Oh, Jen, I'm so sorry. I got so excited. I reached out to Jim. I have no issues working with you. I'm, I'm excited by what I see going on with the company and literally the value I can bring to this role. Um, and if I have to step on <laughs> Janet's toes again, I will or whoever else it might be. Small changes change perception and I cannot let someone block my product. My product has to get in front of the decision maker, even if I have to do it and reach out myself. This is simply about being confident and being engaging learning how to not take no for an answer. If you need a little bit more motivation, as I was uh, working through my time as a, as a uh, recruiter, I changed divisions. I suddenly saw a different division that was, I saw a friend over there that was making all these placements and I'm like, hey, 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 maybe I need to be over in that division. And, and, I, and I changed divisions and suddenly, uh, this was a division that mostly did hourly contract placement, but they needed a permanent person to place those full-time people. And one of the big companies was Revlon. I got to get into Revlon. Got to get into Revlon. And, 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 but, but the other side of the company was already doing a lot of business hourly. And so if I made too many waves reaching out to those decision makers, some boss is going to pick up the phone going to my competitor across the room going, hey, who's this John Cramp person? Get them off my back. And they're not going to come to me. They're going to go right up to the big boss. And I'm going to get my rear end chewed out for upsetting the client. And yet I'll starve if I don't potentially push that client to work with me. So you have to find the balance of risk. And so in this case, I reached out six times. This is to motivate you to understand you can reach out four, five, six times, even in a day or two. I reached out six times in a week and a half to a hiring manager I'd never worked with before. Part of how that works is there can't be even a hint of, gosh, I left you a few messages. I, I haven't heard back from you. Well, you're never going to hear back from me <laughs> if that's your attitude. So, so uh, none of that, 100% customer service, every single message 
leaving a little bit more value, a little bit more insight, a little bit more whatever. And you have to believe in your heart. That person is dying to speak with me, dying to speak with me. Just can't get to me. Just can't get to me. You know what? It's not their job to call you back. It's your job to get to a point, drive them to a point that they're dying to call you back. And so about a week and a half in after all these messages, suddenly I pick up the phone and I recognize the guy's voice from voicemail right away, even though we'd never spoken before. And I'm cringing over the phone, waiting for him to reach through and just slap me. And, and the first thing he did was apologize to me. I, it, I, I wanted to say, I'm so sorry. I've been difficult to reach. I really do need your help. Picked up a job order right on that call. He was dying to speak with me, just couldn't get to me. It's not his job to get to me. It's my job and your job as a job seeker to get to that decision maker. Maybe in terms of outreach, you need to think about a layering effect as you think about multiple phone calls. If the first phone call doesn't get returned, then I have to continue the conversation and then maybe give them permission to call my cell after hours or on the weekends in case it was easier for them. Maybe they can't get to me because they're trying to dial me back nine to five. I would take that call at seven or eight o'clock. I'd love that call. So maybe it's as simple as, as you wrap up the message, as you get several messages in, understanding how to evolve your message is simply, you know, uh, Jack, by the way, if it's easier for us to speak after hours or on the weekend, oh, don't hesitate to reach out at any time. Here's myself. I just gave them permission. You could also do things mixed into different stages of your messaging to build in what's called a tripwire to cause a reaction or even oh, a very nice veiled threat. And so here's how that message might sound. I wouldn't do it on the first one, but maybe the second or third. Maybe my second or third message, I left one yesterday morning, didn't hear back, called them again this morning and said whatever ever I was going to say. And then I allow them to hear me look at my computer to see what time it is. So I'm wrapping up the message. I go, oh, by the way, Jack, let's say, oh, it's just before 12. You know, my next meeting is not until 1230. If we happen to be able to connect before then, oh, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, you know, maybe I'll, I'll try it mid-afternoon. Looking forward, of course, to a great discussion. Here's myself. Boom. So the tripwire, which sounded so nice, I hope, was the fact that I had an epiphany that I have 50 minutes right now. They're probably not taking my call because they're on a phone call. When they hang up that phone call and they hear me and it's so valuable, wouldn't it be nice if they just called me right back? So I gave them a window of time. By the way, my next meeting is with my tuna fish sandwich, but they don't have to know that. <laughs> um, so I left that window of time. And if that wasn't something that motivated them or didn't work for their schedule, then I left the veiled threat that, or, or I'll maybe try reaching out middle afternoon. John's not going away. And yet he doesn't sound like a pain. He sounds like I've, I'm determined. I'm, I've got exciting things to share with you. I've got value. So a little bit of insights into reaching out directly. You'll become far, far better as you do this over and over and over. Whether you'd like to read or write or speak, or whatever your function might be, those skills get very, very powerful by doing them over and over and over and refining those skills. Let's close today on a little recap of what I believe job search actually is, because this fits in perfectly to that direct outreach to decision maker. It is not chasing the open jobs that we see, maybe, maybe a little handful of those. Yes, that's part of the recipe mix, but most of it is reversing job search altogether. Why don't I simply Pick 25 to 30 companies or organizations that I'm dying to work for, dying to work for. By the way, dying to work there cannot be because you saw an open job. Oh, I saw an open job over there. That's about you. Your dying to work there has to be about them like a real date. <clears throat> is it their brand? Is it their product? Is it their position in the marketplace? It's, is it their reputation? It's something. It doesn't matter how tangential if it's real. You can't make it up, though. It doesn't work if you make it up. Devise the steps needed. Well, that's not too hard. I mean... I mean, come on, what John's not, what John's saying isn't really possible, is it? Well, let's see how we could think like a detective working backward, aligning the sun, the moon, the stars to devise the steps needed. Discover the decision makers. Well, we showed you how to do that with a reverse search. What's their title? Decision makers. Their job is to object to you. Why, did, why does the decision maker objecting to you make you upset? You know, when a decision maker objects to me, I go... <sighs> because that's their job. It's my job to overcome that objection with how I position and sell. That's what they want to hear. That's why they're objecting. And that's how they make their decisions. Get the meeting, dazzle them, either have them give you the job or, or, or create the job for you, whatever it might be. 
wherever you are in your process, take the first step. If you're not ready for the calling piece, start by email. You can accomplish almost 95% of it probably by email. You're not going to get that last little bit of extra gravy that might come your way without the voicemail. But wherever you are, take whatever step is the next one for you and learn to repeat, repeat until you're brave enough to try something different or new. This has been Marketing Yourself to the Decision Maker, part of the entire series. Now, tomorrow, as you can see at the very bottom, we'll be back with Charting Your Career Transition. Here's a little visual for it. So it is about chameleoning your way to something new. You know, over the course of my career, I've done three or four very, very different things from one another. So much so people, when they hear the whole background, they're like, and you'll hear it in that lecture. Uh, they're like, all of these things are one person. You can change your course many times and change your colors to chameleon over to the new place. You just have to know how to do it. We'll walk you all through that. Now, whether you're joining uh, me on LinkedIn Live or over on my YouTube channel or over my Facebook, please do, of course, like, comment, share, message, hit the bell, all those kind of fun things that bring a little gravy back. If you need help on your resume or your LinkedIn profile to really have it properly position and sell you and elevate your career brand, I think you know where you can get some help. Just check the self recruiter website, check under the services tab. All my packages are there. And if you need to know uh, or have a little conversation before you know which one is right for you, send me a quick email. We'll set up a time to chat. We're going to cap off the entire week and a half series with a special live Q&A on Wednesday. So if you're not getting your job search questions answered, send them in. Send them in to ask at selfrecruiter.com. That's ask at selfrecruiter.com. And the very best ones are always included. Wednesday, we'll see you at 11 a.m. Thank you guys so much for joining in today and uh, share with your friends. Take care. Bye-bye.